Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we're taking a look at Iron Lights and comparing the Oculus Quest version to the PC VR version. If you end up enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay guys, let's get into this. So Iron Lights is a VR melee combat game available for $19.99 from both the Oculus Store and Steam. This is a cross-buy title on the Oculus Store, so if you purchase it for the Rift or the Quest, you get it on both. There is also cross-play support between all platforms. So I'm going to start by breaking down the melee combat, which is obviously the most important factor in this title. There are a couple different methods of approaching melee combat in VR. One would be a high emphasis on physics, which would see in games like Boneworks, Blade and Sorcery, and even The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. And this aims for realistic collisions and impact. Another method is to just go straight arcadey, where weapons don't have any weight, you could swing them like a madman, and we see this in titles like Ninja Legends. And the final option is to just come up with something fun and strategic, like we see in Until You Fall. Now Iron Lights actually falls somewhere in between Until You Fall and Ninja Legends. It's pretty arcadey and has some really unique strategy elements that in no way simulate real combat. It definitely was not what I was expecting, and this comes with some pros and cons. So one of these unique elements is you're not actively attacking and blocking, you are either on offense or on defense. You have the option to engage the opponent at will, and when you move towards an opponent, you are now on offense, all they can do is block your attacks. During this time period, you just try and score as many hits as possible, with head strikes doing increased damage. Now this continues until you either run out of stamina, or you purposely disengage. If an opponent approaches you, you are only on defense. Now weapons have no collision and clip through everything. Your objective on defense is to strike the enemy's weapons which will make them shatter and the weapon does not reform until they pull it back behind their head. Now there are two other combat mechanics. One is the ability to use ranged attacks and the last is maintaining your stamina. Without stamina, you cannot engage the opponent or perform ranged attacks. Now you hold down two keys to actively regain your stamina, but if you're engaged into combat during this time period, any hits will do double damage. Now in multiplayer, this leads to some cat and mouse type strategies, but it also tends to artificially slow down the game when you and your opponent are equally matched. I just feel like mechanically something is slightly off here. Now in single player, you might be fighting two enemies at one time, but in multiplayer, it's always a one-on-one -on -one game. Now this game doesn't really take advantage of the wireless nature of the Oculus Quest, or just room scale in general. The entire time I played with my Oculus Quest set in stationary mode, and I never saw my guardian because the game limits you to a small circle. There is no locomotion. You're staying in this small circle and you are barely moving side to side because if you do, you go outside the circle and begin to take damage. Now, while this can be fun and strategic, if you're looking for something that more accurately simulates melee combat, this isn't the game for you. Now, the sword fights also take place in a type of slow motion, which makes the weapons feel a bit rubbery as they trail behind you. So combat simulator, this is not, but fun and strategic nonetheless. Now there is a single player campaign, but it's basically just fight after fight after fight. One thing that kind of ruined the single player experience for me is the fact that I kept finding multiple ways to exploit the enemy AI. Now there are five different classes in this game, all of which play out completely different and and have their own personal pros and cons. But as I was getting to learn each new class, I found a method of attack that almost never failed on the enemy AI. This generally came down to windmill type maneuvers with my arms. Now you do need to put your arms behind your head in order to recharge or unshatter your weapon. With the ninja, I did windmills. With the monk, it was a punching motion, kind of like hitting a speed bag, which makes your staff go in a circular motion through your own character. Now with the knight, I just did non-stop ranged attacks. 
If I did them in a straight line, the computer was just completely incapable of blocking all of them at once, and it was not depleting my stamina. So with these methods, after about 30 minutes, I had ground my way to the top of the bronze leaderboard, and I was hoping to see this change when I hit the silver level, but the enemies just do more damage. Everything else is basically the same. Now you do level up characters over time, and this basically just equates to buffs. You do a little bit more damage, you take a little bit less damage, and over time, this will negate the difficulty spike between bronze and silver and silver to gold. Now, graphically, this game is quite simplistic, but still looks really good. You have some nice cosmetic options, and while there is only one arena, you will go to the arena during different times of the day, and that's a nice touch. Another nice touch was the animations of some of the enemies. They stick with the whole gladiator theme, raise a sword to the crowd, or even actively taunt you. It was definitely a nice little touch. Now comparing the Oculus Quest and PC VR versions side to side, I have to say this is the closest comparison I have ever seen. Even Richie's plank experience is significantly downgraded on the Oculus Quest. There's a huge reduction in the game textures and a heavy usage of foveated rendering. This is not the case in Iron Lights. It's clear that Quest development was a priority and you end up having a game that's nearly identical on the PC VR version versus the Oculus Quest version. The only time I ran into a performance issue was when I was recording and a whole lot of attacks scored hits at the same time. It just made the game choppy for a few seconds. Now again, I only saw this while I was actively recording. Yes, the PC VR version is definitely nicer looking and can run at a higher frame rate, but you're really not missing much playing on the Oculus Quest. Now the only thing left for me to really go over is my recommendation on this title. Should you go and pick up this game? Well I guess that depends on the type of fighting game you're looking for. Now if you're looking for something that simulates real combat, it's a hard pass. You're not going to be satisfied. It has abstract mechanics and it's a bit too cartoony. Now if you're just looking for some fun strategic combat, then you can enjoy this. The one on one nature and the fact that this is cross play should really help make sure there are multiplayer sessions available. And from the single player standpoint, there is definitely a lot of combat before you make it to the gold level. So you should end up getting your money's worth, and the developers have told me they are working on additional content. Okay guys, that was our look at Iron Lights. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if I gave you the right amount of information. Did I go a little bit too deep or not deep enough? So if you enjoy these type of videos, guys, go ahead, click the thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and ding that bell, and I will see you guys on next time.